Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm Thomas Manton IV, God's servant, his prophet to the nations, your success strategist. And I am a spiritual father in the kingdom of God. Why? Because I know things. This is a funny thing someone said in London. They said, prophet, people are scared of you. And they're scared to come. One prophet, my prophet friend with his great British accent, said, prophet, prophet, people are scared to come to the meetings because you, you know everything about them. They're scared you're going to tell it. I started to laugh. I said, yeah, I know a lot. I could know, but I'm not going to embarrass anybody. I won't do that. Point number one, if I can say, a protocol in the prophetic is that you, you don't... Uh, Embarrass somebody publicly. Never. It's never right. Uh, unless it's to pray for their deliverance. Like I saw one evangelist. I cringe every time he does it. But he does it. He calls out these horrible sins and horrible things. And he tells people to come to the front. And I'm telling you before God. I'm not guilty of those things. But if I was involved in any of those kind of sins. I would not go stand up there in the, in the front row. Uh, the stage for the whole world to see on global television. I wouldn't. I'd sit in the back. And he commands people to come forward. That's him, okay? And I think, like, he hears from God, and a lot of people respond, and I, I really trust they get delivered. But I, I, uh, I had an experience in London. There was a lady, preacher, who I was preaching for in South, South London, and uh, she called this woman out and berated her, just berated her about all her sins and problems. I was like, I, I was so uncomfortable. I, <clears throat> I was getting really infuriated. So I, I thought, oh, my God, this is just so wrong. You know, you just feel in your spirit. You just feel so bad. So then they introduced me to this lady. You know, I don't know how she was. She, I don't know how she got through it. This lady was calling out things, this and that, in front of the whole church. I was like, nah, 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 it's not okay. So they give me the mic, introduce me. The prophet of God is coming, Thomas Man of the Fourth. I come up. First thing I did, I took the mic. I said, my dear, who was just up here getting prayed for, prayed for by the pastor, come back, come back up here. She's probably, she's probably really nervous by now. I said, dear, you're a sweet, you're a sweet lady. You're wonderful. I looked at her. I don't know how she looked physically. I can't say that she was like a, a beauty queen or, or not, uh, maybe somewhere in between. But I was like, you know, it wasn't like she had any, any striking physical appearance. I really can't remember. Probably a fairly average looking middle-aged, almost middle-aged lady. Maybe she was 40. But I looked at her, I said, you're really a, a beautiful creation of God. And I said, the reason the devil attacked you so much was because of the greatness in you. And I went on, and the anointing fell, and I started to go. And people started, people in the crowd started to respond. They started to clap their hands and shout and cheer. By the time I was done with that woman, she was put back together from what the pastor lady sliced and diced her like a Ginsu knife. You know, yeah, 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 you know, those Japanese <laughs> sharp knives. <clears throat> I, I, I remembered her, remembered and remembered her, put her back together. And the Holy Ghost, I was like, I, I was so thrilled that I did that. But I said, let this, let this be an example. So I found out that uh, lately the Lord has me more so bringing... Points of uh, doctrinal positions. And I started to preach this message because the Lord spoke to me this morning. Let me tell you what it is. Let me get right, let me get to the point about the title of this. Last week, the Lord spoke to me. The blessing of the Lord makes me rich. Me, I wanted to change it to us, but I, the Lord said, no, leave it. Me. Me means you. You take it for yourself, I take it for myself. The blessing of the Lord makes me rich. Proverbs 10, 22. So the scripture can be the title 
But then I, I found myself giving a lot of testimonies and declarations about mega blessings, including very high luxury, big ticket items to use for advancing the kingdom of God around the world. Go back and watch that. The blessing of the Lord makes me rich. It's on YouTube. We'll put the link on Facebook and on other platforms. We have some uh, short clips coming out of that. They were very profound things that the, the Lord spoke through me. So he gave me that title right before I came on. I'm writing a new book called 50 Essential Characteristics or qual Qualifications or Characteristics of a of an, of, a, of an exceptional leader. And I wanted to go through the 50 points, but I didn't get time because the Holy Ghost spoke the message ahead of time. So no matter what else I'm going to say, I'm going to go on this theme of what God said to me early this morning. When I say early, I mean like sunrise before the red ball comes up on the sky six. Before that, before 6 a.m. The Lord said to me, and I've been out all day. I preach. This is my third message. This is my third time preaching today in three different venues. I did one. Oy, oh. I did another one. Ooh, powerful. Wait till you see the video. What a powerful message this afternoon. Jesus in heaven. To God be all the glory for the strength he gives me to do this. And now this. So I started in the morning and I said I would continue. I couldn't really. I, I tried to continue a bit in the second service, but I got into a lot of things. So I don't know what the title of that one's going to be. I might as well just title it one, two, and three. Of this title, here's the title, drum roll. He said, son, doctrinal positions. Here's the title, doctrinal positions for life's important issues. Doctrinal positions on, O-N, or for, life's important issues, or we can call it doctrinal positions from Scripture, Bible, the principles of the Word of God, kingdom living, regarding the issues, the important issues of life. What are the important issues of life? What are they? How you live, how you get on with the call of God, how you flow in the will of God, how things work this way and that way, who you're with. There's a song in America. It got imported to Kenya somehow, because some people in Kenya knew it, but the real hipster, like first world or kind of people in Kenya, not the people that... I heard this Kikuyu song yesterday, I nearly laughed my head off. Just like... Da -da 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 -da. We know where lady. I wish I could put it on right now. One day I'll do that, I'll have some screens, and I'll go, let's go to that song. Da -da 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 and there's this girl. Someone I know, and she's like, blah, 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 singing that Kikuyu song, right? You know how they do? But this was a kind of a rap song from America, this one. And the lyrics, now the whole song, I, I don't in, endorse the genre of rap music. You know, there's a lot of nasty stuff in, in the midst of all that arena of music from the ghetto and all that. Not good stuff, okay? Not, not good genre of uh, content. But I like the line. It says, what you doing? Who you with? <laughs> And the next line is, I'm going down to the, you know, talking about what sin they're going to do or drugs or illicit behavior or whatever, activities. Don't forget that part. But what you do and who you're with. So I, I like that line, you know. You can get a line from something and remember, like a sound bite, we'd call it. What are you doing and who are you doing it with? Basically, who's helping you get on with life? And first of all, the doctrine of the Bible. I want to read you one thing that's really scary. Are you ready for this? Yeah, I don't know if we are, but I, it, it, this is, it's almost terrifying. It scares me, and you know, I don't, I don't scare easily. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not a scaredy kind of guy. The way of wisdom, Proverbs 9. Wisdom has built her house. Wisdom has built her house. I did ask for that before the broadcast started. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. For, the, for your great performance. Thank you very much. Not. She has hewn her seven pillars. Are you kidding me? 
She slaughtered her meat. She mixed her what? Ah, wine. I don't, we don't like that wine. Someone says, do you, some lady from Europe says, do you drink wine? I was like, no. Never. <laughs> Woo, because they come from, you know, some of those countries in Europe where they grow the wine and all that, so they, they always drink a little bit of the wine, but not me. Anything alcoholic, I ain't touching it. Never will. She sent out her maidens. She cries out to the highest places of the city. Is this that scripture that talks about this woman is like a... Wait a minute. Forsake foolishness of live and go... No, this is better. Because there's one that talks about the one, the lady who's a bad lady. I hope this is not that one. I don't think it is. Come... Eat of my bread, really? What does that mean? Verse 5. And drink of the whatever I have mixed. Forsake foolishness and live and go in the way of understanding. Don't correct the scoffer lest you take shame to yourself. And you who rebukes a wicked man only harms himself. That's true, you know. Can't correct a fool. Do not correct a scoffer or a fool lest he hate you. But rebuke a wise man and he will love you. The one way you can tell the wise from a foolish, a wise person from a foolish person is how much they can handle constructive advice. You know me, you could tell me almost anything. And I may not like everything you want to tell me, but if it's got wisdom in it, I'm going to take it, man. Like, take it like a man. I'm going to take it. And I'm not going to catch an attitude about it. I'm just going to say, this is wisdom. I love wisdom. I want wisdom. I love wisdom. That, that would make a good song. I love wisdom. I want wisdom. We need to write, so we need to write a song like that. I have some songs I'm writing and uh, some songs I want to work on. Give instructions to a wise man and he'll, be yet, he'll become yet wiser. Teach a just man and he'll increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. There it is again, verse 10, uh, Proverbs 9, verse 10. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For me, for by me your days will be multiplied and the years of your life, many more years will be added to your life. Psalm 91, 16 is a cross parallel for that. Yeah? I will show you long life. I'll give you a long life and show you my salvation because your mind is stayed on me. Your mind is what? Stayed on me what I want, what I want to do, what I want you to get done. This is a doctrinal position. The first doctrinal position is to fulfill the will of God. I'll get to that in a second. If you're wise, you're wise to yourself. If you, you're a scoffer, this is New King James. I'm sure the other new NLTs and all that would, would an Amplified Classic would have nice, uh, nice way, in some of the modern English, would have nice, nice ways to say these two. I have a friend that got into the Passion Translation a lot, and I don't hear him saying it anymore. Because you go deep into it, there's some places where it gets a bit too wordy, you know, a bit, a bit too verbose. And you you got to watch the translation of each statement. But the TPT, Passion Translation, can be really good at times. And the NLT is really good, the New Living Translation. Let me tell you. That is a very good, if you read a verse in King James and New King James, King Jimmy and New King Jimmy, and then you go over and you read it in NLT, it just brings it out in such a good way. Passion Translation takes it a bit far. Good News takes it a bit far. Uh, Common English Bible, CEB, takes it a little bit far. But uh, Amplified Classic is very good because it can embellish it a little bit, but with, with words that are kind of derived from the, the text and the meaning of what it's really saying. It's great to study, you know. Doctrine comes from God. And Paul told Timothy, the word of God is good doctrine to teach, to preach. And he told him, study to so show yourself approved. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, you know. You need to uh, study the word of God. For by me your days will be multiplied. Isn't that great? Another reference in Proverbs is Proverbs 3, verse 2 and 16. And then Proverbs 10, 27. It's another one. 
Isaiah 10, 27 said, The yokes of, of evil will be destroyed off your life because of the anointing. Isn't that a great scripture? So the foolish woman then, next, next uh, uh, part, it says, talks about the way of folly. So Proverbs 9, 1 to 12, yeah, is wonderful for the way of wisdom. Proverbs uh, 13 to 18 talks about the way of the foolish woman. Now, I knew it was somewhere, and it's here. You see? Remember, I, I said that a second ago. I knew that story about that wicked woman is here. You know what it says about her? It seems like the bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But this man that went with her does not know that the dead are there and that her former guests are now in the depths of hell. Wow. <laughs> There's another translation that says this. Her former guests are now the citizens of hell. Does, does hell have citizenship? <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but it's just like you just get so drunk in the Holy Ghost. I, I, I'm getting intoxicated just sharing this message right now. I'm feeling, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost doing something. The preaching in very untoward uh, atmospheres and environments and turning the place upside down in two different events and then coming back here <clears throat> to do this in the studio. Now, the Lord wants us to understand doctrine. Say that with me. The Lord wants me to understand doctrine. What is doctrine? The counsel of the Word of God. It's not as big and bad and spooky and scary and un not understandable like we think doctrine is. We think I have to have a theologian tell me something or I have to become a theologian myself or I have to become a theological scholar, you know, if I'm going to understand what, what doctrine is. No, doctrine is just the word. It's the mind of God. Prophecy is also, I give a very simplistic uh, de definition for prophecy. Prophecy is God thinking out loud through the voice of his prophet. Prophecy spoken is what's on the mind of God coming into the spirit and even the mind because you see things from your mind's uh, perspective. Like you, 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 it's like the mediator between the spirit and the natural is the soul. And the mind, you can, you can get a thought in your spirit. The Lord can speak to you and your mind begins to, you know, process it and understand it. And then when you begin to speak intelligently, to articulate and say, you're not just, it's not just from your spirit. I've had things where I say from my spirit, I can't even remember what I said. It just pops up and it comes through your lips and you speak it. It's like, wow, what did I just say? But sometimes, you know, your mind will also work to... Um, <clears throat> process something and bring it forth. So prophecy is God thinking out loud. Doctrine is what the Lord had put in the word. So you have the way of wisdom, you have the way of foolishness. I want to tell you something else. A doctrinal position of heaven for your life, for my life, for your life, in a very big and important way is what is the best use of my time? What's the best use of your time? What's the opportunity cost to missing an opportunity? What is the value of an opportunity? What is the value of wisdom? Wisdom is, uh, I always say, wisdom is, is having a brilliant mind to really see deeply into things. And then to know how to apply knowledge, number two. And then number three, which Dr. Mike Murdoch, the, the wisdom, the great wisdom doctor with an anointing to teach wisdom, he's, he simplifies it by saying, uh, he's my dear friend for 33 years. 33 years. No, more than that. Next month, it'll be 34 years. We first met in uh, December of 1990. His, he locked his eyes on me, and a like, Holy Ghost gaze, like, like he, he, the eyes with blazing fire looking at me, looking into me. And he saw something, and we connected from that moment, a uh, divine connection, and we've been friends, and he's been a great mentor and a friend and a teacher for, of mine for the last 34 years now. I almost feel like 
a little shaky to say that. It's like a little bit. Uh, and I've applied a lot of the things he's told me, and I've, he's also told me a lot of things. But I, I want to also go back and recap a lot of the things he shared with me that I took notes on. And then he, he had a whole teaching he gave me, a series of teaching he gave privately to me uh, about how to develop a world-class assistant, how to develop uh, you know, the management system in your office and all that, your ministry office. And it's got brilliant stuff. And I tell you the truth, I have those uh, MP3 players with the pre-recorded messages on them. And I've listened through them a little bit, but I really want to take them and make them a, a curriculum for use. And that's something I'm in the process of doing. So when I say I've known him so long, I also want to check myself, like how much am I? Doctrine also, understanding the word, can also measure you to tell you how smart you are or not in your life? How much are you doing with God's uh, wisdom? Some people have no wisdom, or they don't seem to have a lot. Dr. Murdoch made a joke. He said, you, I don't know if you could prove to me that God created everybody, because maybe Satan cloned, it's a joke, okay, in his funny sense of humor, which is a bit, um, Interesting. And he said, maybe Satan cloned some people. Because I don't know how God can create somebody and then act so, the S word, S-T-U-P-I-D-L-Y. <laughs> I don't know. You, you say you're the creation of God and you can't apply, you know, common sense. But someone said common sense is it the gift of the spirit. No, it's actually a practical application of... Uh, you know, using your mind. Of course, the more sense you have, you know, S-E-N-S-E, -E, we call it having good sense, uh, <clears throat> you, you can get ahead in life with a lot of common sense. I tell people, think, 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 common sense. If they can uh, really organize a good meeting and handle it properly, today was very impromptu, but there was really no advance notice. We kind of just got there. But um, Man, it was powerful. By the way, that video will be coming out the next couple of days. You need to see it. I probably will title it something about... I don't know. I have to see the title yet. If I'm going to call it Doctrinal Positions or what, about part two, and then this could be part three. And we call it a day from here on this and see what the Lord will say next. Probably something else. But this is a topic worth exploring. What is the guidebook saying about how to live? What does the Word of God have to offer about the key things about your life? Your health, your wealth. Your well-being. I shared this scripture again today, uh, and I'll say it again. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, talks about this beautiful, dark lady. He called her the dark and lovely one. She says, I'm dark. Why did she say that? Well, she had to be an African woman. Beautiful, wonderful. Fine. Now, one doctrinal position about our lives is, is giving. What we give, we get back. What we sow, we reap. God is not mocked, Romans 6, 6. Whatever a person sows, that shall they also reap. You sow bad, you'll reap bad. You sow good, you'll reap good. You do good unto others, good will happen unto you. So even though none of us are perfect uh, yet, we, we need to work on trying to think about the other person in the equation of what we're doing. And say like, uh, you know, how am I, how am I uh, wanting to be a blessing to people? I really want to bless people. The heart of God is to bless us. Our heart should be to want to bless people. And when you do that, man, woman, man, you, it comes back. 
It really does. The harvest I have coming, that some I've received, many I've received, but there's some astronomical harvests I'm receiving. But I, 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 I sowed a lot for that. I, I, I paid for that. You know, the scripture says, I, I wanted to get into something. Though, uh, this, this message started with a thought of two things, which are really, really a bit strong to say, but I need to say them in this message right now. And we'll go from here another day into more of this or whatever, different things about it. But I, I uh, two things to look at. Your life of service, but also your management of your own life. See, one seems like I'm self-serving, I'm serving myself, and the other ones I'm, I'm uh, giving, ca throwing caution to the wind and ab abandoning myself to serve somebody else. Guess what? Is it one or the other? No. Both work. Both are right. You should give, 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 like you lost your natural mind and you're giving on. You just keep giving. You wake up another day, you give again. The scripture says, unless you give yourself to another man, you shouldn't receive your own. I know what that's like. People look at me, if I have anything, I serve, man. You don't know me. People don't know me because I don't share the testimonies a lot. Maybe in the future days, I, when I have my church, you know, I'll be doing teachings all the time, series all the time, bringing people all the time and developing people. I think in those settings, I'll share a lot more testimonies about my life, what's, what's happening and what's happened and how I've gotten to where I, I am and what I've been doing. And, but I served. I served. You don't know. Selflessly. I gave myself for years and years and years serving. I gave away cars. I gave away uh, uh, money. I gave my time. I gave my sacrifice, my service. I, I, I gave, 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 gave. And I wasn't looking at what I was getting back right then. But I, I came to understand the scripture. Unless you are faithful in that which is another man's, who, Jesus said, will give you your own. Basically, he's saying, not me. So there's the realm of service. There's, there's the realm of abandoning yourself, abandoning, abandoning yourself to service and giving yourself like that. There's a season for that. I'm telling you. I think it really it never ends because in par part of your life <laughs> as you're serving God, you're always going to be serving other people. You're always going to be doing beyond what you could do in the natural. But this woman in the Song of Solomon, the dark and lovely one, she said, she said, I've been made the keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard I've not kept. What does it mean? the Holy Ghost. What does it mean? I have to take stock. I have to analyze. I have to look at. I have to give account. I have to meditate on the promises. I have to meditate on the instructions. I have to recollect what God said to me. And I have to make sure I'm doing all these things. But now, even when you go to do that, you're not serving yourself. You're serving Him. You, we're, so we're always servants, eternally so. <clears throat> even, even in the millennial reign, are we going to be servants or, or lords unto ourselves? No, we're going to be serving the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's still the Alpha and the Omega, the faithful and true, the Amen. The beginning and the end, the overseer of our souls, the bishop and overseer of our souls. It it's never ends. The truth, he's the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. He's the way, the truth, and the life. This never ends. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Glory to God forever. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Your operations be done on earth as they are in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread 
And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And keep us from temptation. And deliver us from all evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And of this kingdom of yours there shall be no end. So guess what? We're eternal servants, but we're eternal sons. I love the scripture in John 15 when Jesus said, Hey, uh, before now you might have been considering yourself as mere servants working with me for me, but I, I call you my friends, my sons and daughters, my friends, not just servants. But I'm telling you there's something about servanthood. Let me, let me, man, I feel the Holy Ghost. I, tell, I am anointed. This, this I know more than anything in life. I am anointed. Oh my God, I'm anointed. This is God talking here. The Lord spoke to me this morning and he said, what about service, son? I said, yeah. What about my purpose of my creation, how I call some things to serve? Yes, even the animal kingdom. <clears throat> some of them are servants. The insects eat the garbage, the refuse off the earth. Sadly enough, the shellfish eat the garbage off the ocean floor. But I don't know. I like the shrimps, you know, that had that black line of stuff in there. You just take a knife, cut it, rip it out, cook it the best you can, and, and especially lobster tails. Oh, one of the greatest things in, in life is lobster tails. We need some lobster tails. The whole lobster, the claws, and, you know, the part of the back and all that, you got to break it and pull it. But that big lobster tail, the biggest ones are Australian. They call them Australian rock lobster tails. They, they go there. They, they grow really big. They're like this long. And when you cook them just right and cut a piece and dip it in that sauce or that butter, man, that's like, it's heavenly. So I, I don't know, people say like shellfish isn't the greatest thing, but sure, it sure does taste good. And I don't know if you want to eat it every day, but once in a while I don't see a problem. Jesus even told Peter, Peter said, I can't eat certain things. Jesus, Jesus said, I, I'm showing you some new things that's okay. And don't call what I, don't call unclean what I don't call unclean. This is, this is permissible. It's okay. Peter had a vision even about food. Can you imagine that? He saw certain animals. I know there's some deeper me meanings in those things. You can get into some teachings on that. You know, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened in this, in this flipping generation that's uh, click, 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 Instagram, TikTok, click, click, click everywhere, scrolling, listening to all these prophets, bishops, apostles. I said, man, the way these people are going with the social media, trying to build their own little businesses and pages and all that, I wonder if there's more apostles and prophets and apostles and bishops than there are actual people. Everybody's a prophet. What's your name? I'm prophet so-and-so. Really? Prophesy. Let me hear you. Give us a word. Kabroshakati. I can know in three and a half seconds if you're switched on. I'll know. I want to hear it. I want to hear God talk through you. Prophet. Really? Big title. People call me prophet. They, not to, aggrandize, to take an aggrandizing title and to, to give it to me or bring it on myself. It's what I do. I've done it for decades. We prophesied over nations. Things have happened that affected the lives of millions of people. They're in black and white, color printed page, news article fulfillments in societies. They're there. I have a book that I wrote that I, I felt, I just picked it out of the, my, uh, one of my archive closets and I, full of books. And this one is uh, sold out, man. We printed thousands of these and they all sold for about $10 each or uh, 1,000 shillings at a time, at that time, some years ago. And uh, there was 1,000 copies that sold easy. So it was in the millions of, you know, what went. And peop Some people would call and order. I remember this one lady, she worked for the government. Now she's retired. She's a bit quiet. She went, <laughs> Rose, she went farming. You, I, should, we should, I should hook us up. Maybe we'll have a tea with her and we can laugh together and tell her. You can look at her and tell her, hey, are you really getting anything out of this farming you're doing? <laughs> 
But there was a time some years back, she had a good job, man. She was making crazy money, huh? Government, government uh, salary. And she used to, anytime I have a book, a new release, she'd be like, I need 10 copies, I need 20 copies. And she would just send the money, like, straight away. I'd pick it up. In the... But this book is called Healing the Soul of the Society. It's 250 prophecies for a particular nation. You can guess which one. Look, look, look. But I, I heard the Lord say to me, take this book and uh, strip the, uh, the, have this version, leave this version, because that's the way it was originally done. And I also have a volume two of this. Can you imagine? This is volume one. It's 250 prophecies, and funny enough, it became exactly 250 pages. 250 prophecies? 250 pages. You know, only God could have made that happen. And this has its original application. We'll leave it like that. But I want to take the setting out of it because the 250 prophecies are, are all principled things from the mind of God. Breakthrough and deliverance prayers, uh, prophecies and declarations. Very detailed things too to transform a society. So I want to call the healing the soul of the society prophecies for national transformation, something, you know, we'll make a subtitle. And just take out the setting of the nation, the nation, the nation, the nation, because let me tell you, corruption is the same in every country. The same devil is there that's here or anywhere. Any country, city you're in, whatever city you're in, whatever city I'm in, there's corruption there, there's nonsense in the church, there's nonsense in the government, there's nonsense in the people, there's nonsense in the sinners, there's nonsense in the saints. You know, the way of wisdom. Proverbs 9. First uh, 12 verses talk about the way of wisdom. Second is the way of folly. There's wisdom and foolishness everywhere. So when you have a book like this and God breathed about how, how to actually cause societal transformation, we need to get it. Now, I have another book, The Laws of Success. I'm going to an expanded edition in this and uh, working on that. <laughs> Too slow a process. Let me tell you what the Lord said in the afternoon service today before I release the video. I'll give you a little, little uh, recap. The Lord said, I am very interested in speed and acceleration. I'm not slow. I'm not slack concerning my promises. I didn't say that then in the message earlier, but I'll say it now. God's not slack concerning his promises, but I said this. The nature of God, he's always, he, he's, he's always in a hurry. Except the balance out like servant. I serve, I give myself, but I also have to manage my life. It seems like two different things, but really we're serving the vision of God when we're managing ourselves, and we're also serving the vision of God when we're giving ourselves away uh, with a great abandon to serve a particular leader or organization or ministry or uh, mission, you know, whatever it is. Another book I have, The Benefits of Excellence. We sold out of this, but I found some about 20 or 30 or 40 more printed copies that I had in the in a put away. I just found them. So I do have some hard copies of these if you'd like to get. And these also, these two are also available in digital format. And also my book, Prophetic Keys of Successful Living. Great book is in uh, uh, is in print also. And it's also available as a digital book. Now, Archbishop Harrison Nana wrote the foreword on this, and he published this book for me as a seed. What a wonderful man of God. I've been a blessing to him. He's been a blessing to me. We have a great thing, uh, relationship. Now, I felt in the beginning, when I was just about to come out here, I uh, come on, I, I felt like I just really wanted to honor him for a minute and just say, like, from... Like from the, a, a deep-rooted uh, spiritual connection and relationship, I want to, uh, how can I say it? Bring some representation of, he, you know, who, also who he is because of, because of my connection to the source of that. Now, when, when somebody is very successful, you just know it. 
Let me tell let me tell you what one billion shillings is. Four point seven million dollars. About. Right? Something like that. Because I know five billion is now thirty-six million. Why did I do the mathematics on that? Because it's something I'm working on. Thirty-six million. Five billion shillings. So so to be a billionaire, you gotta be you have to be playing with about four point something million dollars. I would say it's the will of God for great men to be there. I I am absolutely certain, beyond any reasonable shadow of any doubt, and without any variable of doubt or shadow of turning, that I am to be in that status. And I am. I am that I am. It is the will of God. There's a prophetic word about three, four, about a month ago. You can find it on my YouTube channel. Prophecy. I don't know why people didn't click on this one. They're scared of the title. Well, grow up because God wants you to be blessed. Prophecy. Uh, dot, dot. Quotation. The rise of the billionaires. This is a day speaking doctrine. Look at Abraham was a billionaire. Job was a multi-billionaire. Abraham was a multi-billionaire. Moses definitely was. He's the one that told God, hey, slow down on the blessings. We, can't, we don't know where to put everything you're giving us. And uh, Jehoshaphat was a billionaire. Yeah. Solomon was a trillionaire. Ha <laughs> ha. U.S. dollars. He had so much gold. If you saw the gold he had and what he worked with, you wouldn't be able to stand up. And uh, a biblical example, the Queen of Sheba, she couldn't handle it. She saw all he had and went, oh my, too much. Till click, boom, she fell up. She fell back. She was a rich queen herself. In fact, she put a lot of stuff together. They said, study-wise, in the, almost, in the millions of dollars, a million plus. Somebody even went as far to say they thought she brought him about between 4 and 20 million U.S. dollars worth of uh, uh, gift, gold, spices. What else did she have? She had herself too, right? <laughs> that was another part of the gift, I guess, was her. Sheba. Sheba, Sheba, Sheba. And what was David? David's lady was Bathsheba, right? Solomon's mom. So, multi-million dollar gift to get an appointment with the, with the great king. And she said, I heard some things about you concerning the fame of the name of the Lord. I love 1 Kings 10 the way it says when it talks about the queen of Sheba coming on the scene. It didn't say Solomon, you great king, opulent, belligerently blissed, violently wealthy in opulence and splendor. No. It said, concerning the fame of the name of the Lord. In other words, when the people, I feel this Holy, Holy Spirit. When it was talked about the glory of Solomon to, in, the, in the talk of out there, of the people. They mentioned the name of the Lord concerning the fame that you have because of the power of the name of the Lord, how much he's blessed you. They all gave the glory to God. They acknowledged him as the source, even the queen of Sheba. Now Abraham, when Abraham was, Abraham the Bible says was very rich. Genesis 13 2, he's very rich. And uh, told the king of Sodom, I, I won't take anything from you. You can't even fix my shoes. You can't touch me. I don't want you ever to say you gave me anything. Because no man has made me rich but almighty God. Shakalaba. <laughs> Woo! No man. No man. Angels are here. Let's lift our hands. (sighs) 
Jesus, Jesus, my God. Glory. This is what I was trying to feel in the two churches I was preaching at, but I, I couldn't feel it enough there, but I feel it here in my studio. The presence of the Lord. It began to enter the first church, ah, couldn't happen. Second church, it began to come break through, but the people were, I don't think they were so ready to, uh, geared to receiving that. I had to push so hard, preach so hard, but it didn't tire me out. You know, I felt energized by that. I felt really tired. L last week when I came back, I was, I had to take a couple of hours in between before I came on the, the live broadcast. And it took too much time, really. I, even now I was getting things ready, but I, but I feel more energy. I feel more c mental acuity. I feel more, I can't explain it because, because what the Lord was, was saying, <clears throat> especially from that afternoon service and now. But what I wanted to feel, I'm feeling right now. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Wherever you are in the world, bow your heads. Let's pray right now. Father, thank you. The touch of heaven, there's something else I, have, I must say because the Lord spoke to me this morning. I, have, I, I, can't, get, I can't jump off here without finish this without say, talking about it. I got to talk about it. Part of the creation, I began to start on it, but I'm going to finish it in a minute. But let's pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Take time to pray for yourself. I charge the people today. You, uh, I, ch I mean charge, I mean challenge them, push them, shout at them, prophesy. I, I told them, pray for yourself right now. This is a foreign thing. You know, most preachers preach all day screaming at people. They talk about everything under the sun, and some of it's good. You know what I mean? But they don't zero in on a teaching like I was doing to help people understand how to become successful, doctrinally speaking, Holy Ghost-wise speaking, prophetically speaking. And, you know, every time I, I, I bring a message like that and God speaks through his servant, the prophet here, Thomas Matthew IV, it, it will come to pass. I even said that the Holy Spirit will follow some of you. Some of you, are, you're lost. You're saved. You love God. You're a part of church. You're in the church. No question about that. But in life, you haven't quite discovered who you're supposed to be yet. Exactly. I said, God, God always has more details. I said, the difference about me, I said, if you, and everybody was glaring at me like, oh, oh. I said, something different about me. I'm very unusual. I'm very unique. I'm very distinctive. You can't find anybody like me. And I told the people, I said, you know, part of the reason for that and not just my appearance and all that, which is amazing and blah, you know, but spectacular and all that. But, but not just that. I have identified myself. God has brought me through so much, so much processing that I know exactly who I am in the kingdom. So when I say I'm a spiritual father, when I say I'm going to teach doctrine, I'm going to do it. Now, Proverbs 4.1 says, hear the instruction of a father and don't forsake my law. For I give you good doctrine. Then he said, get wisdom, get understanding. For wisdom is the principal thing, verse 7, and on and on. Now 9, the way of wisdom, the way of foolishness. All through Proverbs. I turn to Proverbs 22 and 23. Spectacular. Especially 23, right before the 7th verse. The 6th verse talks about something very heavy. And then it goes into, as a person thinks in their heart, so are they. But read the verse before that. Go verse by verse through the Proverbs. You know, we can read the Psalms too a lot. Psalms are good, okay? But we've read the Psalms. But we need to read them all. The Gospels are great. The Gospels of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Wonderful. The Book of Acts. Absolutely, phenomenally fabulous. But let's look at wisdom. Let's do that. Wisdom is the will of God. Wisdom creates wealth. Wisdom makes you uh, impenetrable to foolishness. When you're filled with wisdom, you know you see everything. You, by God, I feel the Holy Ghost. You move. You just know what to do in every situation. You see into things. And then the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of understanding, Isaiah 11, 2, and also Revelation 5, 12. Those two things talk, talk about knowledge and power, wisdom, riches, power, strength. 
some similar, similar attributes between the two verses, but Isaiah 11, 2. The Spirit of the Lord is there. That's number one, the seven spirits of God. He standing there himself. The Spirit of the Lord standing there. Now, I am the Spirit of the Lord. Here I am. Now, here's what I have. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, might, which is strength. The counsel, which is brilliance. Knowing how to speak, how to understand every situation, how to navigate your way in life. And then the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Those seven things. Revelation 5.12 has seven things. First power, then riches, then wisdom, then strength. There it is again, number four. And then glory, honor, and blessing. Power, riches, wisdom, strength, glory, honor, and blessing. Seven. Seven. Seven son, seven daughter, seven, seven, seven. Seven, seven, seven. Lord, I prophesy right now in the name of Jesus. I want to get into more of this kind of things in, in future broadcasts, uh, upcoming, not future, long time away, like right coming, uh, you know, day by day we'll be doing more. And we're about to start a series of meetings. We're going to have events. Uh, some of you people that, uh, I, I was going to throw this out as an announcement, but not enough people are on this Facebook. YouTube, there are more people because we're filming on television camera and I'm filming on the phone. The reason I'm doing the phone right now, and I didn't hook up a lot of special audio wiring and all that, just me and the phone, because I want people to see this in real time today because this is Sunday. So throughout the world, you're getting your Sunday message from the prophet here. This is my church. This is my ministry. This is our out, uh, outreach expansions of the world. Now, I want you to give an offering, okay? I want you to give an offering. I'm really serious about this. I know sometimes I'll take a thing at the end. I'll talk about, you know, sow a seed. Here's the information. And I say it in kind of a by the way. No, uh, by, by the way way. I'm not going to do that right now. I want everybody to give an offering. Those in my studio audience here right now, I want everybody to give an offering tonight. Please do it. Please do it. It's meaningful for you. There's something God's speaking about. The purpose of your existence is going to unfold more from tonight and tomorrow. God had me prophesy that over a great crowd of people today. Uh, in the afternoon se se a church uh, session, I was at the church when I spoke. The Lord is going to do that from today. Today's a prophetic day. We're about to come to the end of the month. The presidential election in America is coming up. And let me tell you who the, the choice winner should be. Donald J. Trump. Yeah. In fact, I pray he wins by such an L, the L word. Landslide. <laughs> Double. Landslide. Lord, let him take every kabasheta. I feel the anointing. Ayilasai. Let him take every swing state. Let him win them all. They said... Georgia, North Carolina, and even Pennsylvania should go to him. That's enough to bring him the victory in the Electoral College. That's enough. And the others, he has Arizona. They say Nevada is even going his way. They say even Virginia, it may not. It may not. But we pray it does. Even Virginia could possibly flip. What's happening right now, they're seeing the folly of this opponent, you know. So when I say the right man for the job is Donald Trump because he's the only man on the ticket. Did you get it? Ha <laughs> ha. I don't mean to make a joke out of it, but uh, praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. He's the man for the job. And the media has done such a picture. Now out of desperation, they go at, going after him, calling him all kinds of names, trying to debase him when it, what they're even saying doesn't make any sense for an intelligent man. That's not who he is. And they're going all out to slander him. The lady, she's interviewed, and she can't even put the thought together. They call it word salads, right? What the heck is that? That's a new thing. A new word salad came out. Well, you know, the momentum of something that's supposed to be, it's going to ha it should happen. And What did she just say? Everybody's like... Boing, 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 boing. Woo you know the, the old cartoon with the bird, the guy gets hit in the head and the birds are spinning around, flying around his head and they make this little 
hear like birds chirping and the guy's like, he's dizzy, he doesn't know where he is. What? What are you talking about? Question, what are you doing about this? What, why didn't you handle this? Well, you know, Donald Trump. <laughs> he wasn't there. You were the one in the position. You were supposed to take care of it. Whatever, man. Glory to God. So, I began to pray seriously. I've been praying for, for some time, but the Lord had me begin to pray more. And all of a sudden, I see the spiraling down and him rising. But, but it's a real battle because you got to understand there's forces that are against him so severely. But you know, a new thing has happened that's never happened before. Even people in the Democratic Party are starting to flip toward him. Even some industrialists, but, you know, big money people, tech billionaires and uh, hedge fund managers and J the CEO of J.P. Morgan and so many others. Even some are switching parties to come over because of his leadership. It's phenomenal. Can I tell you something? The Lord spoke to me today, and I don't know why he said it. The Lord spoke to me to say, he said, he, he said the name of J.D. Vance, who's the vice presidential candidate. He said his name to me. And he talked about what he would do in office, the, pro, the things he would do that are good that he's going to do. I was like, thank you, Father. Let's lift our hands. You don't know the victory of this. If the other side were to win this thing, the world as we know is over. It's that serious. When you have people that leftist, that liberal, that social, that insanity, insane things that are just the debauchery of the human experience in a satanic way, and therefore those things. And to take money, even from the, the coffers of people that are supposed to be for the American people, and give it to like terrorists in the Middle East, come on, and then give it to people that ran across the border illegally. You know, they showed a wide pan shot of like a couple of thousand uh, illegal immigrants that came in. You know who they are? I didn't, they, you didn't see any women? <clears throat> no children. They say the children got to the border and disappeared. People came out with this. A lot of people don't know this. 300,000 children have disappeared. They came through the gate that was supposed to be closed by the wall, and they came in, and there were no more. Can I tell you, some are probably sacrificed. Some are human trafficked. You don't know where they went. Children coming from other countries, coming in. And all of a sudden, they're asked, people are asked, like, where are they? Nobody knows. 300,000 children missing. Terrorists, drug lords, drugs, criminals coming across the border. And, and the government of America now with this current uh, administration is paying for them. Shame. It's the shame of disgrace upon the, upon the known world. But that's about to change. Father, I thank you. We're praying again that you'll cause everything to work out right. I feel the Holy Ghost here. Wow. And day one, President 47, Donald Trump, will turn things back the right way. He's the man for the job. So much to say about that. But Father, your will be done. Now, when we begin to pray, and a few other ministries also begin to get after this thing, and all of a sudden the thing began to spiral. People began to see who this woman really is. And her vice presidential candidate. Ah, horrible, horrible, horrible. Horrible, just horrible, horrible. J.D. Vance, the Lord spoke to me about him today. I don't know why, but I'll say what he said. I look at his life. He has a, a, a very strong woman as, as his wife. 
She's a no-nonsense person. She even tells him what she thinks, whether he, you know, she doesn't just follow him blindly, although <laughs> to have a good, smart woman is a gift. Now, I got to get into what the Lord spoke to me about this message. But Father, let me close this prayer on this. This one. Father, the November 5th election, however long it takes, we, we know the outcome. We believe it. We thank you, Lord, for the victory in Jesus' name. It is done. So the Lord spoke to me about the function of certain things. When you're a servant, you give yourself to serve. And then when God made the help meet for Adam, she was a suitable helper. I'm sure he helped her. In the garden, he helped her too much. He helped her, he helped her betray uh, the Lord's command and uh, the human race went into darkness. He helped her too much. But God said, I'm going to make someone to help you. I'm going to make someone to help you. It's a beautiful thing. Here's an advert. This is not current, but a uh, flyer. Here's a, a special that I had on four books, and it's just the books, right? Healing the soul of the society, the laws of success, the benefits of excellence, and spiritual, supernatural operations of spiritual conquest through the office of the prophet. Long title. That's another great book that sold out out of print. We had a special offer on this, but the front was prophetic meetings uh, that we're, we, we look at at venues, we're about to do them again. So uh, this Facebook, again, as I was starting to say, is so, this is a few people, but if you're out there and you've been listening and you're listening and following us, write me a personal message if you're, if you're around where we are. And those of you that, that applies to you know who you are. And ask us about the venue. The venue is coming up. We're going to begin to have our own events uh, really starting next week. Praise the Lord. I'm excited about it. So the purpose of a thing is a doctrinal thing. Doctrinal positions from what? The Word of God. On life's important issues. The important issues of life. Father, let your word, there's so much to teach about, I'm not time for it now, but there's so much to teach about what it is you had to say about everything, from business to wealth creation to good health to the sanctity of life to the wonderful, serious purpose of the mission you give us, you've given us to, to do. And uh, it's all here. Boy, this morning I got so, I was infuriated because I, I just heard people singing songs. You know, the funny thing is they give microphones in churches to people that can't even sing. It's like, oh, oh. If I, if I caught myself going out of, out of key, I'd drop the mic. If it was me, I wouldn't keep singing. That should be the fear <laughs> that should be the fear of anybody that's given a microphone, that you'll go out of key, out of tone, tune, or that you don't have anything substantive to say. That should be the fear of everyone that's given a microphone. My microphones are right here. And when I'm out, I use my Sennheiser handheld. So the doctrinal positions, what are they? We'll get more into that. I know I have to do something more on this. And uh, we want to start to do some things in print, layouts of books that are writing, and uh, power, PowerPoints and teachings in writing that people could really sink their teeth into. Because at the end of the day, 
His word is his will. Remember the scripture says, the flower fades and the grass withers, but the word of our God stands forever. Yes? Let's lift our hands on that. The word of God stands forever. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall never pass away. I, I want to ch challenge every preacher. Stop talking about your, what you want to talk about all the time. Start teaching the Bible more to the people. Now, you can have your kind of flow that you do part of the time, but a good part of the time is there. <coughs> to teach the people what's in here. And, and what they don't know. Someone said, what you don't know won't hurt you. Nonsense. It'll kill you. <laughs> what you don't know. If you don't know something. Knowledge is power. And knowledge according to the will of God. Once you have the known will of God according to his word, or God has spoken to you prophetically about something, once you know that, you become invincible. I want everybody to sow a seed into this grace because God is going to give you that, a touch of this anointing of fire to put you on the course from today in a new way. And let me prophesy, you're going to see new open doors. You're going to see, you're going to have new friends. You're going to have new favor. You're going to have new opportunities. You're going to have people help you in ways you never thought possible. The most amazing surprises are coming. I prophesy right now. I want everybody to sow a seed. I'm serious right now. There's sometimes people hear the message and they don't do nothing. You out there that are on, I see many of you on the screen. All right? People that are following our ministry, I want you to sow a seed. The m -Pesa line is 0706164191. It'll be on the screen. Take time to sow a seed right now. Everybody in our studio audience, I want everybody to sow a seed tonight. Sow a couple of thousand shillings. Please do. Please do whatever the best you can do. Whatever the best it is you can do. Maybe it's more. Maybe it's not quite that. But whatever the best you can do. Sow something into this because the Lord is here right now. Now, God spoke about acceleration. I want to prophesy that. Speed, acceleration, and quickness is coming. That the things you've been waiting for, you'll be stuck no more. I preached it this afternoon with power. Oh, my God, that video will change people's lives. So get ready for that. That's coming out this week. And we'll be back on live again this week, and we'll see you again next Sunday. The Lord bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you, give you his peace, but also give you his power and his prosperity. And everything according to what you've ordained and said to us, according to your will and your word. Let it be so in our life in Jesus' name. And the exact specific mission, I prophesy, exactly what it is God has ordained for you. You'll know it more. The Holy Spirit will touch you and follow you. I, I it's like I, if I have a, a heavenly appointment book and I could write, fill in slots with people's names, I schedule that prophetically, an appointment for you to be overshadowed by the Holy Ghost, to know more about your mission on the earth and to get it fulfilled quickly in Jesus' name. Adakisha, quickly. Come, Lord Jesus, quickly. I say, come, Lord Jesus, in your purpose, your power to help me fulfill what you've ordained before the end comes, because we only have so much time. God's going to reveal, he's going to unpeel, he's going to unravel people from being stuck, tied up, limited, stuck in life. There are many big things you want to do and you haven't seen it yet. Why? Something's against you. I break it tonight in the name of Jesus. I break it today in the name of Jesus. That thing's holding you back. I prophesy it will, it will linger around you no more. It will not hold you back another day from today. There's a holy seed. I want people to stretch themselves. Now, I don't say this often, but I'm telling you today, there's something to sow. I don't know. Dig somewhere. Find something. 
Work it out by tomorrow. Work it out tonight. Work it out right now. Whatever it takes. I, I, I believe this. The time is ticking away. I must fulfill what God has ordained. I want to break this cycle of limitation. Anything that's held me captive from moving fast. It's broken now in Jesus' name. So be it. All right, I'm looking to hear from you. Thank you for being my partner. Forget about the partnership for a minute. Sow a seed for yourself. This offering is for you. Take advantage of it right now. The information is on the screen or in the heading on Facebook on the heading, the heading of the title. And take advantage of that right now. I want to hear from people. I want to see people sowing and giving that I haven't seen you giving before. And those that do, I want to see you do it again. All right? Thank you for our friends in America. Thank you for our friends in Europe. Thank you for our friends across Africa. Thank you for our friends across the Asian continent and the islands of the sea and the different continents of the world. God bless you. I'm praying for you. And ultimately, uh, this voice of mine will become a global voice. We'll be talking on a regular basis through te satellite television to millions of people. That these all things are being arranged. But I tell you, the Lord visited me today to preach this with fire. And again, you'll see the video coming out. But I want you to take action right now because I'm speaking it right now. You don't have to wait to see another message we did. Right now, the Lord is releasing his power upon you to go very fast. If you were to see God in reality, to stand as your teacher, your father, your mentor, Yes, we have earthly fathers. We, yes, we have spiritual fathers. Yes, we do. But if you were to see God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit himself, I think they'd be standing back like this looking at you like, I've been waiting for you to get up and walk. I've been waiting for you to move. God is a mover. You know, the, a, Abram got blessed as he went, not as he stayed home. God told him, get up and get out and move. And as he went, the Lord said, now. I'll bless you, Abraham. And from the first verse of Genesis 12, he told him, get up and get out of your father's house and go to the land where I'll show you. And then he said, and I'll make your name great. And then he said, second verse, I'll, make, I'll bless you and make your name great. Then he said in the third verse, those who bless you, I'll bless. Those who curse you, I'll curse. And Abraham took on that covenant power of God's blessing because he began to move. This is the nature of God. He's a mover. We need to move. You get it? Be useful, not useless. We need to move. We need to move. We need to produce. And the Lord wants to do that for you. He wants to bless you for yourself, and he wants to bless you so much that you're a blessing to the rest of the world. In Jesus' name, it is actually happening. I'm receiving your seed to pray over it as you send it right now. And as you sow it right now into this grace, and you will see the miraculous happening for you. In Jesus' name, so be it. Looking to hear from you, waiting to hear from you. Let's go. In Jesus' name. God bless you. I love you. Talk to you on the next one. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet, as a prophet, will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.